Okay, everyone, you're in for a very, very dramatic video. Number uh, one, because I've discovered the crime of the century. <laughs> That's actually a quote from The Stupid, which is a 1990s movie that I love. But um, I also, I have some breakfast burritos, and they're going to burn in 19 minutes. This is super dramatic. So anyway, uh, I discovered this last night, but I already had done too many videos yesterday. So this is a quote from David Walker. You might remember David Walker as the guy whose comic you flipped through and then didn't buy, or the guy whose comic you bought one issue of and didn't buy another, or the guy whose comic that you bought and then you didn't finish reading it because it was so boring. Uh, David F. Walker is a purse puppy, puppy uh, and uh, he's uh, currently uh, uh, piddling the, the two feet away from his pee pad uh, to uh, get revenge at the company that used him as a purse puppy for three years and then discarded him unceremoniously. He now has uh, no work from Marvel after having steady work from them for the last three years. And we're going to do a deep dive into that right now. But anyway, so uh, uh, what should I do? Should I do this? No, I'll start with this. So uh, he starts with this tweet, <laughs> which is a quote. It's in quotes. Is that It says, uh, you seem like a nice guy, and I hear you're a really good writer, but I don't carry any of your titles because, well, I don't have any black customers, so I can't sell them. Sorry. End quote. Attributed to unnamed book retailer, <laughs> to which I say... I don't believe you. <laughs> this is uh, this is an embarrassing lie. I used to lie a lot uh, up until like the fourth grade, and then I stopped because I realized I made myself look like a moron. Um, now you could say, well, he's paraphrasing it, but he did put it in quotes. Uh, so we're gonna see that this is um, then. Uh, uh, lo, a white knight appeared. <laughs> Tim Seeley comes out. He's like, so only black people read black comics? So dumb. My white-ass brothers and I bought everything in the Milestone lineup 25 years ago in rural Wisconsin. F that guy. Okay, uh, number one. <laughs> oh, look at each HP with a salty comeback. No one talks like that. <laughs> okay, number one. Uh, you're replying to a fake person. You're an adult. <laughs> if I went to work and I'm like, I saw a wagon, you know, <laughs> like... I would expect other adults to be like, you're an idiot. Not be like, like oh my gosh, that's scary. Tell me about it. Um, this never happened. This guy he's talking about is fake. Oh, and here comes the Steve Orlando. Oof, good comeback. I actually think this oof is kind of like a, uh, yeah, I don't believe you, but I want to be an ally. I want to be a good ally. Um, so then all these people come out to virtue signal against this uh, fake person that David made up. Uh, God. Why do they talk like this? Asterisk, incoherent noise consisting of the unholy combination of a scream, howl, and a 45-minute lecture for that retailer into one sound. Asterisk. God. Now they're talking about Black Panther. This has nothing to do with anything. Um, uh, God, I just want to see all these people. Actually, this is actually a good... Um, this is actually a good reaction gift for that statement, except for it's, uh, yeah, that didn't happen, bro. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah, just all these people uh, acting like this grown-ass man lying is, is not the saddest thing they've seen this year. So we're going down some more, and, uh, oh, here's Rich Johnston. When I ran this story, the biggest response I got was Diff Spleet. That's because you're the most famous liar in comics. <laughs> when Rick Johnston is the guy backing your story, <laughs> it's like it, it's like when you went to the to uh, work and said, "I just saw a dragon outside," and a guy takes a red marker, starts scribbling on his arm, and he goes, "Look at me too! He burned my arm." <laughs> God. <laughs> Um, so scrolling down some more, just some stupid reaction gifts that I like how they're like inc in incredulous at the racism of the fake a retailer, but it works just as good for incredulity at the uh, lying of a man who I think is around 40 years old. Um, <laughs> look at this cut. I love your titles. Luke Cage was one of the best books Marvel was putting out. This is the kind of nonsense that hurts sales. I agree. A, a, a writer making up a fake quote is nonsense that 
uh, hurt sales. A character isn't a black character because only people of color should read them. These books are for everyone. Uh, if you would look at the sales of David Walker's books, they're actually for no one. They plummet so far because he's absolutely terrible and he gets hired because of his skin color. He is basically the anti-Christopher Priest. So, um, okay, it just goes on, God, forever. Are we at the end? Are we at the end? We get it. It's a completely fake story about something saying that no nobody would say, unattributed, and we're going to see later that uh, just like with Mark Wade and his um, threats that he's seen, uh, he can't share them. It's it's too ter or he actually says there's too many of them to share. So did we get to the end of this? <laughs> okay. Uh, I just saw a store re request David Walker and Sanford Green for a uh, signing. Like that's gonna. Oh no, Sanford Green's really good actually. I was thinking about this other uh, writer. God, what what is this is retarded what that shitting fuck i'm just what is with this forced cursing they all do this stuff so uh, so they have this thing that they do at the end of conversations on twitter where um they they have this thing like it's like little hidden ones for offensive content and sometimes they're really good <laughs> okay um so okay so the things they hide were, were were offensive because they said an obvious lie is lie so here's a uh, mr batman saying you are a hashtag liar race hustlers like you are some of the most pathetic people alive um echoes dark says you need to piss off this fictional store owner you just created <laughs> vitamin d milk says you are a terrible liar uh <laughs> That's pretty funny. So uh, anyway, let's look at David Walker's career because we're going to see something very, very interesting in that uh, he's been in the comic industry. So, okay, so this is comic book database. Uh, usually when you, there's a um, option to sort by chronological listing, which is oldest to newest. And this is very telling. So he starts on Tokyo Tribes. He's like indie stuff. Oh, that's funny. He was on the same image uh, anthology I was on. But let's look at this. One story in 2007, one story in 2010. So three years of absolutely no work. Then he gets like a teeny tiny little bit of work from Dark Horse, 2011. And then he's just back to random number 13 synergy. And then something happens. Something incredible happens. And if you scroll out, you'll watch this. So right here, this is this page right here is, okay, so let's see. 2004 through 2013. You can pretty much fit, this is as small as I can get it. You can fit 10 years of his career onto one page. And it's just a smattering with large gaps, sometimes three years between a job. And then, lo and behold, in December in 2014, now this does actually look like more uh, work because they do multiple versions. Like you, you see it's shaft number one listed like 12 different times. All of a sudden he's getting monthly work and he gets monthly work for the next four years and whoa what happened what suddenly happened after barely working at all for 10 years he suddenly right when the sjw era started started getting daily work oh, let's see what book they put him on shaft a black detective shaft 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 Okay, so he does a Shaft uh, miniseries, then he goes to Cyborg, a black superhero. Then, when they make uh, Nick Fury into a black guy, he gets on Nick Fury. He's on Cyborg, and then he's on uh, Power Man and Iron Fist, so black guy and a white guy. By the way, that was the most, oh god, that series. So it was, I think Sanford Green was the artist, and they showed the preview art, and it was so good. I was so excited about the Power Man and Iron Fist, and I love that. I love that duo. I love them. And then it was the most trash, boring, stupid stories, and again, it just plummeted. And it, because it was Axel Alonso Marvel, he was immediately given the follow-up. Horrible, horrible sales, plummeting sales, and then they gave him the Luke Cage book. Now, he was also given Nighthawk, who is a black uh, character. That one also horrible sales. Uh, then they give him, this is actually where it got really kind of sad. Then the uh, they give him 
some Tarzan stories. Tarzan and the Planet of the Apes. Tarzan on the Planet of the Apes. War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, I talked about this before, and it's kind of shocking to say it, but this is a comic industry that will only give a black guy black characters and ape characters to write. This is actually really sad, and I think he knows that he's a purse puppy, and he's sad because he's been abandoned uh, out on the street. They no longer have use for him. They gave him three to four years. His sales were always terrible. The bloom is off the rose. There's nothing. They're not getting any more backpats to say they put David Walker on a storm mini, a, 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 you know, a night thresher mini, a, a rage mini. Uh, they tried it, so they put him on a bunch of black superheroes and a bunch of ape-related stories, and uh, then uh, he just ran out. So then you see it all kind of fizzles out. And now from March 20, uh, uh, March and April 2018, the only books he has out are the last two issues of Luke Cage. This is really, really sad. And he said about a month ago that um, he has no follow-up work for Marvel. So stuff like this right here is um, an attempt to save his career. So then someone says, uh, was it was this in the Pacific Northwest? Because that legitimately sounds like something I'd hear around here. It doesn't surprise me in the least. Yeah, well, yeah. The extremely liberal Pacific Northwest. I'm sure it was right in downtown Portland that they said it to his face. And then everyone clapped. Um, so then uh, I forgot to log out so I could see what Kate Joel said. But basically he says uh, he's heard uh, uh, variations of this dozens of times. And then... Uh, then this guy says, I'd name the hell out of them. And, and David Hoff, first of all, when you're lying, never start your lies with the word honestly. Honestly, I've heard it a lot. There's too many to name. So you just discovered the crime of the century. You've just discovered, what, dozens? Dozens? Too many to name? Why is there too many to name? I would say too many to name is like 50 or more. So David Walker, during his career of not getting work for 10 years and then getting steady work once the SJW era went into full swing, and then his, all of his work drying up when the SJW thing is kind of coming to an end, he was told so many times and so many people, and he knows their name. He doesn't say, I don't know their name. He says, there's too many to name. He will not name one of them. This is embarrassing, dude. This is the, like just like a ridiculous. And then and then people start like naming their areas. Wow, I hope that shop wasn't in Oregon. No, it was not. It was in the enchanted land of imagination inside David F. Walker's brain. So here's the saddest of sad things, and it's the same sadness of the Christopher Priest story about him only being offered books. Uh, because they're black characters, is that Christopher Priest had the dignity to turn that down. He had the self-respect to say, I love comics and, I, and this is my dream to work for comics, but if I'm only being offered uh, black characters uh, uh, just because I have black skin, I'm just going to go do something else. I'm just going to go be a preacher somewhere. And uh, I'll come back when you guys see me as a person and not a skin color. David F. Walker, unfortunately, was the anti-Christopher Priest. He was banging around the, the uh, edges of the industry for 10 years, and all of a sudden, uh, SJW Marvel started, you know, and uh, they said, uh, hey, come here, hi, black person. You're black, right? You understand black people. Black people, no, no, we don't understand. You know, okay, so we're gonna have you write black people and apes. How do you feel about this? And he should have said, F you, <laughs> I'll come back when you guys are not acting like clowns. And he said, oh my gosh, certainly. I'm the best person to write black people and apes you could possibly imagine. Um, and he wrote terrible, terrible stories. The funny thing is that uh, he did get Occupy Avengers. And Occupy Avengers, you know, you look at it, you go, okay, it's an Avengers book. It has uh, Clint Barton as the lead. It was really Diversity Avengers. The deal is when he wasn't writing black characters, he could actually write a good story. So he was actually doubly sad. He played himself, just like, you know, insert DJ Khaled uh, bit right here, because 
the guy has talent. He doesn't have a lot of talent, but he's, he was good on like like basic action adventure. I remember some fun bits in Occupy Adventures. The thing is, he could not stop with the constant racial caterwauling and the the you know the need for uh, especially like this character, this minor character in Nighthawk. So he gets a Nighthawk, and then he oh, I'm scrolling on the wrong page. And then he uh, ends up making the assistant, who is, wow, the no-breasted, uh, pseudo-lesbian, side-of-the-head-shaved black woman, the biggest cliche in comics right now. He makes her the focus of the book. He then has her pop in o Occupy Avengers and literally be able to do more than Hawkeye's little side Avengers team could do. And just the most of oh, she's, she's, she's a super genius, too. Um, just stupid uh, caping and white knighting and it's embarrassing dude I felt bad for him I mean it's sad it's really really sad uh, so what you have right here is a guy not understanding is a purse puppy not understanding why he's out in a cardboard box in the rain where, where are all the people who uh, loved him where are all the where's all the comic book press that uh, announced each one of his books like it was a huge deal where's all the Marvel editors who are Hiring him for everything. What happened? One of the things I always say about these uh, purse puppies, which are people hired for surface or immutable aspects of them just to show off. Hey, look, we have a trans writer. Look, we have a black writer. Look, we have a female editor. Um, they get very... Imagine the milkshake girls. No matter what reason any of them was ever fired, they will all give the same reason. This is because I'm a woman. They were hired because they're women. In their mind, all they have to do is keep being women, and they can behave in any way. Um, David Walker is very confused. He's like, I was hired because I'm black, and I'm still black. Why am I not getting hired? I didn't do anything wrong. I was, I was black here when I was writing uh, Shaft. I was black when I was writing The New Black Nick Fury. I was black when I was writing Cyborg and not Nighthawk. Why am I not getting... What happened? I'm still black. There's still black characters. What happened? And But he knows what's happened. He knows that he basically traded in... You know, instead of uh, going on talent, uh, he went on uh, skin color and he memed himself really, really hard. Uh, so... Uh, Yes, uh, to your statement here of this a fake a quote from an uh, unnamed comic book retailer who is supposedly one of many, I will finish with this. I don't believe you. So anyway, tell me what you think about this video. Uh, tell me what you think the real reason that people didn't uh, order David F. Walker's book. They all started well. They all had big number ones, big debuts, and then they just... Plummeted. Oh my gosh, it's one minute till my breakfast period. This is super dramatic. Okay, so I'm going to have a bunch of uh, videos later today. I'm going to go to the comic store, try to find America 12, the last issue of the America Chavez series. I'm so excited. Thanks for watching.